Hi guys and welcome to another care review. Okay, so today we're having a look at one of these. A classic 1950s US Air Force jet. This particular one is from Tamiya in 148 scale. And it is the Republic F-84G Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds being because the decal sheet for this particular aircraft is for the Thunderbirds display team. Okay from the 1953 or 1954 um, show season. So you do get a choice of which decals you're going to use, okay? This one comes with a pilot, it comes with a pilot's access ladder, uh, separate flaps, wing tanks, get open and close the cockpit, okay? And does come in this particular one, in Tamiya's they call it shiny aluminium, it's basically chrome plastic. Okay, so the kit number for this one is 61077, came out in 1998. This one cost me, it was expensive, this one cost me $25, okay? Yes, $25, cheap. Um, always like my cheap bargains, always on the lookout for them. When I see them, uh, yeah. I have a tendency just to go for them. Anyway, okay, so there's the aircraft presented in flight with an accompanying Thunderbirds jet. Okay, beautiful livery. Love that picture. Okay, that is awesome. Gives you a great idea of what the aircraft would have looked like when it was flying. Okay, I do like that box art. Uh, box art box art okay so let's have a look at the rest of the box on the side usual Tamiya's side view top and bottom views of the aircraft brief history in Japanese on the other side same again side view okay this is literally the just to remind you that it is belonging to the F-84G Thunderbirds okay okay that's the box. Let's have a look and see what I actually picked up for my paltry sum of money. Instructions. Very large decal sheet. All sorts of decals on it. Okay. One bag of sprues which has normal grey parts which would you would get in the standard F84. Okay. Which is cockpit parts, ladder, etc. Wheels. On the other side, there's your shiny wings, okay? Not quite chrome, very much polished aluminium, and I do like that look, okay? The difficulty, of course, will be matching the seam lines, etc., but we'll see how we go with that one. Okay, so that's the first brew. Second bag out is, as you can see, fuselage, again, in the very shiny aluminium, and the clear parts and a very shiny pilot figure. And that's it, you've got two bags of sprues and not much else. Okay, so let's get rid of the box. And in a second, we'll have a look at those instructions and that really nice looking decal shape. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. So standard Tamiya, photo of the actual completed model, fully painted up, all the decals, etc. Brief history of the aircraft and also the Thunderbirds acrobatic team. Okay, English, German, French, and Japanese. It's always good to read these histories, it gives you a, a reasonable idea of what the aircraft and the operators were all about. And you can always follow that up with more uh, Googling, literally. Google the Thunderbirds, they're quite impressive team. Okay, so, I believe, here's your paint call out, all Tamiya colours, recommended tools, usual cautions, okay. It does say here, remove the plating from the areas that needs to be cemented. Alright, so, yes, because this does have a shiny plating on it, you will need to clean those surfaces. I recommend cleaning only those particular areas that you are going to glue all right leave the rest but fit it up first okay then we start with the cockpit okay paint call outs throughout which is really nicely done 
right? What a nicely detailed little cockpit. Pilot figure, okay? Now the pilot figure is fully um, fully plated, I should say. All right, so you will need to decide whether you're going to use him or not. Um, you will probably have to take most of that plating off before you paint him. We'll see how that goes. You do get a ball bearing weight for this aircraft so it doesn't sit on its tail, which is fixed underneath the completed cockpit, okay? Make sure that you do actually do that, otherwise you'll have a tail sitter and it will be embarrassing. Okay, a few size halves go together. There's your exhaust nozzle, okay? Fairly straightforward, nose goes on. This is your um, nose gear. That's where that goes, okay? Wings, all right? So really nicely detailed wings, okay? This is your um, main undercarriage base. Wing tips, okay? Extra fuel tanks. I did see somewhere a comment I read on a forum a long time ago that they didn't use wing tips for the uh, Thunderbirds because um, it would affect their maneuverability. Although well, that comment was completely wrong. If you look at actual photos of these aircraft on display, actually flying in 53, 54, they did have the wing tanks. Okay, made no difference. These things are supposed to be designed so they can fly and maneuver. Okay, wheels, wheels, sorry. Wings, those are the wings, guys. <laughs> wings going on, tail going on. Separate flaps, so you can have the flaps up or down, depending on your choice, okay? Fairly straightforward. All right. This is just attaching the flaps and the wheel doors. This is your undercarriage going together, as again, paint call outs throughout. All right, fairly straightforward. Not sure what that is. I get the feeling that's to prevent it from sitting on its tail, but I'm pre pretty sure you probably don't need that. All right, because, yep, I was right. Select weight or D5 for holding model. So you can have this pin sticking out the bottom of your aircraft if you want to, to hold it up so it doesn't fall on its tail, or just put the weight in. I recommend just putting the weight in, okay? That would just look wrong. Okay, next step is your nose going on. Okay, this is your cockpit, of course. All right, it does have an interior parts which need to be painted. Some very careful painting will be needed to done on the cockpit. You can have it open or closed if you want to, and you do get this ladder, which will also need to be painted. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. The complex part will be putting the decals on and also painting this aircraft up because you do need to paint the red nose okay so the red nose and the red tips on the um, wing tanks will need to be painted and matched up with the actual decals which will be the most complex part and as you can see this is the 1954 show version and that's the 1953 show version. Okay, so that's the instructions. Let's have a look at the decal sheet. And this is a very big decal sheet, as you can see. So you do get most of your nose, wing tanks, etc. The red that you use to finish it off will have to match that particular red, otherwise it will um, not look very good. So I think in this case I will probably opt for the Tamiya colour so that I know it's going to match. I normally use Vallejo 99.9% .9 of the time. So, but in this case I'll probably purchase the Tamiya recommended colour just so it matches perfectly. Okay, so really complex, really nicely done. These, okay go on the side of the aircraft you do get pilot seat belts if you don't want to use the pilot okay 
instruments etc and all the usual warning labels and things so that is a really nicely nicely printed very clearly printed decal sheet and it, it does work really well for this aircraft okay uh, i will give you a close-up of that so you can have a really nice look and in a second we will have a look at the actual sprues Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. There are literally only four sprues in this kit. And I think first we'll look at is the clears. Now first I want to show you this one. This is the ball bearing, okay, quite heavy. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic bag and guarantee you I'll lose it if I do. But let's have a look. These are your clears. Really nicely done. There will be some very delicate painting on that cockpit make sure you don't paint the clear parts but it is quite possible to do and I do like that they are nicely done really nicely clear so I do like it it's going to be a challenge taking these particular parts off without causing the usual damage but we'll see how we go with that Okay, so that's the clear parts. Next we will have a look at the grey parts. Okay, so you've got your cockpit, you drop your wing drop tanks etc you do get bombs with this all right because this is a sprue from the standard f84 okay no the thunderbird acrobatic team did not carry bombs on their aircraft so they're for the spares box okay there's your main undercarriage wheels your cockpit sorry nicely detailed instruments on the cockpit i do like that okay they will have to be painted but i do love the details pilot seat drop tanks there is your access ladder and those molding points there will have to be removed okay and just interior there's your pilots pedals etc so i do like that detail on that is really nice crisp and very little cleanup along the mold lines so that's really good So let's have a look at the next group, which is this one, the fuselage, okay? And as you can see, it is beautifully shiny. I haven't buffed this or anything like this. This is the way it came out of the bags, all right? So you can see the sun reflecting off it. Really nice detail. Panel detail is really nice. There's your pilot, okay? So whether you use him or not, he's going to need cleaning up anyway along the mold lines. So you may end up taking most of that plating off, okay? So some of these parts will need to be painted or possibly even stripped of the um, plating before you put them together. But I do really do love the shine on that fuselage and yes the difficult part will be matching that shine along the seams when you join it together um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet I'll have to have a look around and see what the best way is possibly some 
chrome foil although I think that might be too shiny so we'll see but I am impressed by that the shine on that chrome is beautiful I can probably understand why the private seller sold this because looking at that maybe he thought it was going to be too difficult to actually put it together and still have it looking really nice along the seams I always love a challenge okay always love a challenge okay so that's the fuselage And the only other sprue I've got to show you is this one. Oops. The wings. Same again. In the same shiny plating. It's not quite chrome. It is, I guess, a shiny aluminium. But the detail on that is really nice. Okay. You could get away with putting a very, very faint wash in those panel lines to bring them out a little bit more but is it worth the risk of marking that particular shiny surface that one i'm not sure okay so u.s aircraft during the 50s were all shiny aluminium they didn't really camouflage them that much okay navy planes were painted etc but this is the Thunderbirds, okay? Weathering on the Thunderbirds jets? I doubt it. They were highly maintained. Always polished. Always shiny, okay? These are your aerobatic display team. The aerobatic display team. So, weathering at a minimum on this aircraft. Okay, and that is it. Like I said, there's only four sprues, really nice decal sheet, and that's about it. So that, guys, is Tamiya's Republic F-84G Thunderbirds. Really nice looking aircraft. Okay, from the 50s. Remember, these things came out early 1950s, only a few years after World War II. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look like a supersonic. It wasn't supersonic, but it was definitely still a good aircraft. All right, so hope you've got something from this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Again, thanks for your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. And as usual, because this is the end of the video, thanks for watching. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you later.